Hello, welcome to our interview. I'm Friederike, editor in chief of the Cloud Report, and today I'm very happy to talk with Daniel Izquierdo. He's Spanish, so I apologize. From Biturgia, and I'm very, very happy to meet you. Um, I learned about Biturgia at the Open Infrastructure Summit this year, mm -hmm. and I want to learn a little bit more. So maybe introduce yourself and introduce Biturgia, please. Sure. Uh, well, thank you. It's uh, uh, it's a pleasure to be here to having this conversation, uh, both of us. So as you said, my name is Daniel Izquierdo. I am one of the co-founders of, of Biturgia. Uh, we are now, so this year is our 10th anniversary. So we've been 10 years in in the business, which is good. Thank you. That's that's a journey, I can say. Um, yeah, a bit, a bit about me. So um, uh, background in computer science, PhD on free and empirical software engineering. Back in time in 2012, I was doing analysis on, on empirical software engineering on the Mozilla community specifically. Um, yeah, and, and nowadays I'm, I'm currently holding the position of CEO I'm uh, one of the uh, co-founders of the Chaos community, where our technology is part of. Chaos stands for Community Health Analytics for Open Source Software. Um, we are, let's say, the technical leaders of, of Grimoire Lab, which is the technology that then we are using to provide services. We'll talk later about Viteria. And then I'm, I'm as well uh, uh, vice president at the Inner Source Commons Foundation. So it's like our our ecosystem of open source communities together with open search and the technologies that, that we are using. Um, yeah, so in terms of Viteria, so where do we come from? Um, so as, as I mentioned, right, so we started like 10 years ago. Um, our background so, so was mainly about analyzing um, community activity processes in open source communities. Um, back in time, well, we, we said, what if we start a company? So we had the technology because we were producing open source tools to analyze open source projects. From a from academic perspective, which is where we come from, we, we needed to be sure that we can reproduce the analysis that we were doing. We can uh, run once and again anything that we were basically sharing. People were asking for data sets. Um, basically, by having those tools was a really good starting point to to be, to be able basically to be faster to produce uh, data. So then you can use that data to do the research. And then in 2012, uh, those were the tools that we use as the very beginning of our, uh, let's say, technology uh, to start providing services. Of course, the, the academic world and industrial world are, are very different, are very much different. Um, what we realized that perhaps was was uh, kind of important in academia or like, you know, close to the edge was not that important in industry. While well, in industry, they were interested about other things, right? Um, this is where we started uh, our journey. So nowadays, what is what is Viteria? So let's say that our, uh, well, first of all, we, we want to produce open source tools to analyze open source projects. Um, and that's why we have this a agreement with Open Infra Foundation and with other of all the foundations we've been working with Wikimedia and, and some others. And the thing is that uh, open source is a, a key attribute, let's say, for Viteria and, and during our, our last years of, of you know experience and, and work together with, with all of these communities and, and companies. So with this tool, what we are producing are analytics about the uh, the projects that matter that are important for for our customers. So if we think of an open source foundation, then they have they are an umbrella of open source projects. So then they are interested in their projects, how their members are doing, showing you know a neutrality uh, like a, this is the right place for large corporations or small corporations for any entity to play to play together and to produce software, to produce knowledge, or to produce certain things. Um, so metrics are important from from that perspective. Um, then we, over the years, basically our very first customer were mainly open source foundations and open source communities. Over the years, then uh, some companies started to be part of the Viteria Nest, let's say, and um, and some of those companies had really specific uh, needs. So if you're a, a, a company or corporation. Uh, you are using open source, basically. Um, I would say 100% of the corporations that are out there are using open source nowadays. Uh, but from a technological perspective, from a risk assessment perspective, perhaps, 
they are just adopting the technology, right? Uh, now they are realizing that there, there are certain things called compliance and, and they have to think about licenses and all of this stuff. But if you think beyond that step, we, that might be kind of the very first maturity level when adopting open source technology, is that um, you should be part of the open source community in somehow. So the idea is if you are a company and you are using open source that is critical for you, you need to have certain strategy on that open source project community ecosystem because if not others will decide the roadmap on you will will do certain things that perhaps are not that aligned with your way of thinking or needs or requirements so uh, you need first to sustain those communities that are kind kind of your open source providers we can say but, but then at the same time you need to understand who is who in the community how you can help the community um, and given that probably uh, we are talking about the level of thousands of open source projects that matter to you, then you need like a data-driven approach to guess what's going on out there. And that means about uh, doing competitive analysis. That's about understanding the code review process and time to close things and do certain stuff. So then you can predict internally much better the your engineering life cycle. So what is basically what is your time to deliver something to your customers depends heavily on the time that open source communities are delivering software and releases to you, right? So those are kind of the questions that are important. We can think of impact, influence, uh, uh, talent retention and talent attraction. So there are, there are many topics that could be covered um, uh, in the open source spectrum, but then you need metrics to understand if those things are uh, going in the right direction for you, right? Um, and, and the third level of engagement that we can have with, with Viteria. So we have, uh, remember, open source communities and foundations, then OPS, OSPOS, basically what I, I already detailed in somehow, and then inner source. Um, inner source is about bringing uh, the best open source practices within the walls of the organization. And then it's about moving, uh, it's about breaking silos of development. So if you think of, about a large corporation, a bank, for instance, or an insurance company, they have several development teams here and there. And the problem they are facing is, is that they are building once and again the same piece of software. So uh, then let's think for a moment where, where else in the world, basically, people are working in a distributed way, producing high quality software and geographically distributed. So basically open source communities, right? So then it's about what can we learn from open source that we can use internally in the company. So inner source is not about doing open source, but inner source is about bringing those ways of thinking. It's about uh, working collaborative, co collaboratively. It's about uh, building a, an internal community. It's about building software together across different geographical regions. Of course, the problems that you, you have to attack here are totally different. We, we may start discussing about the uh, security or cultural approach, which is probably most of the, the, the main the main issue that you, you have to deal with. You, you move. So we are in a really hierarchical structure with strong ownership where you have budget and some certain things and moving people to participate in other business units. That's hard. But first of all, it's a cultural approach. Second thing is mainly processes. And then finally, tools like, like allow to, to work in, in that way. So Viterja offering is basically about uh, having, let's say, doing uh, uh, consultancy for metric strategy uh, uh, at these three levels. But then specifically in the OSPO ecosystem or ISPO, Inner Source Program Office ecosystem, is about providing the high level consultancy. It's about providing and guiding projects. So it's basically about having the hands on on the problems, helping the people to move forward. And then the third main leg is about measuring that what we are saying and executing is basically effectively uh, done. So we can we can measure basically we are going in the right direction with the tools that we have. Of course, in the three different main business lines that we have, um, uh, the reasons, the business goals or community goals are different. But then uh, what you are specifically measuring in, in the three of them is what, what matters basically in, in that respect. So we, we help to match basically metrics and, and the business goals through all of this process. So this is with Erja. <laughs> so, sounds great and was a lot. And um, I want to 
go a little bit deeper into the analysis or measuring of um, project open source projects and, and communities mm -hmm. um what exactly are you analyzing not not the software i believe mm -hmm. but the activity or what are you analyzing or measuring mm -hmm. yeah um so so if if you are part of an open source community or you're you have certain um let's say uh, uh, accounts there like in github in gitlab uh in jira in, in slack uh, irc channels and, and some other places so each open source project they use from five to ten different data sources we call a data source basically git repositories or github issues or gitlab merge request or or jira tickets for instance or slack communications right so uh basically we have we have uh we have all of those. So with um, with a tool, what we have or what we are gathering, well, first, what, what we are gathering, we are gathering information from each of the APIs, log systems, or directly going to the regional data source, perhaps by uh, gathering info from the IRC channels or Slack channels, if we are allowed to, of course. Um, and you, you put everything into one place. So what you have is a consistent and persistent uh reporting of your of the data of the projects that matter to you um let's go let's let's take an example here so if yes. you are producing code and you have a commit in a commit you are you are stating basically who you are name surname email address uh you are stating basically your time zone as well and you are identifying basically the files that you are adding you know touching in general so you are adding files modifying files removing files and so on and then you can even go to the level of lines so we know basically who is doing what when and where and all of that information is stored in in a database um so that's in the case just of the git activity but if we think about the uh, github pull request for instance then you can have information about uh who is sending a pull request who is reviewing the pull request you have you could have access to the uh to the conversation i mean every, all of this is public of course um uh, we need to be under the umbrella of gdpr and all of this of course but in, in the case of, in the case of open source as uh, um, our customers are, are coming from the open source world in most of the cases uh we are using that information to attribute basically to, to give the attribution to the right right attribution to the right people so uh, we are new, we are not using this for marketing purposes we are not using this to take advantage of the data and indeed the data is not ours it's not Viterja so what we do as Viterja is basically first we reduce the uh, technical complexity of the outside world and basically what you have is everything in one place so you don't need to, to take care of the APIs or the logs changes updates or upgrades here and there basically you don't care about that you care that you have the data in your place so you are now much closer to your business needs that instead of you know uh, start thinking about gathering data um, and the second thing that we do is that we 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 simplify let's say the uh, the legal discussion by the gdpr and so on where we have a really uh, strict way of taking care of the private information of, of the people um, and all of that indeed that information is in in, in separated uh, databases as well so all of this data basically suddenly you have like a, a lake of data software development analytics data in, in that spectrum and then what we do is we 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 start producing uh, information closer let's say to the business layer so in this case to ospos or to community managers or to open source foundations depending on on their needs so then we need to, to have certain discussion about the metric strategy um but then, uh, of course, in the in the tool, there are some out of the box uh, things. So we have we are supporting, for instance, more than thirty different data sources, some of the the ones I mentioned before, and and we have uh, seventy uh, plus uh, different use cases already covered. Let's say by the tool, by the open source version of the tool. Uh, well, the, the tool as such is we don't have a private version of the tool or anything, so it's basically fully 100% open source. So th there is no open core version of, of, of Viterbi Analytics, let's say. What you see, it's what you have. It happens that we take care of all of the deployment, maintenance, uh, back, back, back upgrades, back fixing, all of this, all of this process. So going to your question, back to your question again. Yeah, so we gather information from all of those data sources. 
we put everything in one place and then we start building databases or indexes because we use open search uh, closer to the needs of let's say to the business needs so example here we have um, a specific dashboards focused on DevRel. We have a specific dashboards focused on community managers' needs. We have a specific dashboards that are focused on engineering uh, discussions. We have a specific dashboards that are focused on the chief level for OSPOS. So there are many of them. Um, and then the tool is flexible enough that you can create your own things in terms of visualization. You can create your own dashboards. And then there is indeed a, an API uh, to, to the open search database uh, that you as a developer uh, you can take the information and move it to to any other place remember that the data is yours uh, so you can do it uh, within your company or foundation or or your your open source project so yeah this is this is more or less the, the process wow <laughs> <laughs> i'm a little bit overwhelmed um because of the um possibilities of usage of this data base mm -hmm. and um yeah sounds very good great and um to to go on in this direction um we both mentioned the partnership with the open infrastructure foundation mm -hmm. um which was announced this year how is this um partnership um no what is this partnership? Why? How do are you working together? What are the aims? How mm -hmm. do you help the foundation? Yeah. So, uh, so with with Open Infra, formerly OpenStack Foundation, right back in time. Well, the the, the storyline here or the history together is that well, we uh, we were we were hired by the OpenStack Foundation back in 2012. So indeed, they were one of our very first customers. Right in the beginning, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, we were we were very proud of that. So we were very happy. Um, um, yeah. So that that was great, basically. And we were producing a specific reports on on certain aspects of the community that they were interested in. As for instance, the time to to submit a patch or the time to review a patch just to check if, if times were growing, for instance. All of this work was, was initially done with Stefan, uh, Stefano Mafuli, that was back in time the community manager of the OpenStack Foundation. He's now the, the executive director of the Open Source Initiative nowadays. Um, and the thing is that that was quite, quite interesting. Then back in time, there was like a new project, uh, Stackalytics, more community driven. And then the community decided itself, well, we are moving to a stack analytics, um, stack analytics, and, and that was all right. So they decided to store work to stop working with us. Um, nowadays, the the main difference with 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 the past is that we are now a let's say a strategic partner. And we are we are and, and this is a partnership. So basically we are helping each other, we are growing together, um, um, and we are trying to build a um an open source solution that is uh, fits basically in this case open infrastructure foundation needs, but it's easily uh, let's say could be easily adopted by by other by other open source foundations. Um, so then, what what are we specifically providing or helping with? Well, first of all, the dashboard. So the dashboard is a the central piece of the let's say engagement where we have all the information from different projects. Uh, it happens, and, and and to the best of my understanding, because I'm not 100% sure of, of this, but Stackalytics had certain um, limitations in other projects that were kind of satellites to OpenStack that are now part of the Open Infra Foundation, mm -hmm. as for instance, Kappa Containers, Starlink X, and all this. So they needed like something else, and they needed metrics. Um, so we are now uh, providing a dashboard for each of the projects. We have an aggregated view of the whole Open Infra ecosystem um and now we have uh, in during each of the of the summits we have an agreement and well we, we needed to check in the in the in the one in berlin right but um my my perception is that that was a success the and we had a a, a central place basically what we call the metrics corner where everyone in the community can, in the community and the in the foundation can go and discuss about community health and community metrics so it's about building this together with Open Infra because they are basically bringing the context and we are bringing the data skills, right? So both together is basically the uh, the sweet spot here where 
we can discover really interesting things as, uh, and moving forward together. Um, then, of course, we are we are we are helping anyone interested in at the foundation level, not only foundation staff, I mean, but at the foundation level with anyone. This is an open call, basically. If you have interest in the open open infra dashboard or anyone here, you are more than welcome to join and let us know. And then we we run trainings from from time to time. The idea is how can we the open infra foundation and Viteria make the most of the metrics so they are effectively used by any of the projects and individual entities that are part of the open infrastructure foundation so metrics are a key piece let's say in the strategy building um, the community because you, you need metrics to make decisions right so it's about providing those um of course from the business perspective the open infra foundation they they are not interested in 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 running this, I mean, by themselves or having a specific team specialized in metrics, but then at the same time, they need the metrics. So then we are here to help. And of course, as, uh, all the technology is open source and everything. Uh, so that's like the uh, a trustable, let's say, relationship between both parties. One of the topics um, at the summit were mm -hmm. was um, building a healthy co community. You also. Mm -hmm already mentioned um how does your data help i i, I think I, I i can imagine how the data helps to analyze the the situation of the community and mm -hmm. if they are healthy or if they are active or productive but um how you can help developing communities or integrating new members or um yeah making the communities healthy and productive mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah that that's that's indeed a a good question so uh well probably we need to talk to the community managers and, and community members at the up at the open infra foundation the way matrix are are embedded into into that process is by having them directly as part of the uh, decision making process an example here you may have a um, certain strategy you want to run for 2023 whatever it is and I'm, I'm making up here uh but you would like to be let's say let's say you want to you want to help newcomers right um mm -hmm. because you you are detecting that uh, or your perception perhaps is that um the process there is is slower and slower because you are certainly growing and then your technology is trendy and then you have newcomers joining the, the foundation or the projects or so um the thing is that because you are trendy you will have more people interested in the technology but then at the same time you need to teach them how things are going so then perhaps you start saying well for 2023 we need like a uh training or mentoring sessions for newcomers each summit for instance that's something that the open infra open stack foundation did uh, several years ago because they had this this very same problem and basically what happened back 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 then in time is that that the the, the response time for newcomers submitting patches was growing and growing and growing and that was a problem because then basically that means that the whole development process is kind of going slower okay so how can we deal with uh, slower uh, developing processes so basically by training uh, uh, newcomers might be one of those actions that you may say okay for 2023 we are applying these mentorship actions or we are applying these training sessions the question i have for you basically is how do you know if that policy is is actually working basically you don't know so you need you need data to check that um and you need you need to define certain kpis from the very beginning so at the same time the, the way we advise basically is that at the same time that you are uh creating a policy be sure that you have a way to measure let's say success of not or, or not because then it's where data can help in that process and that's one of the situations by understanding if if you know if if your policies on certain aspects are are growing so by having more effective uh newcomers faster onboarding and so on i would say this sounds like a healthier community there are many many aspects we we can discuss about what health mean in open source communities and that's part of the work that we are developing in in the chaos community as well um so there are there are things as evaluating risk that might be from a from a business perspective there are there is another working group for instance that is called diversity and inclusion i was indeed one of the co-founders of the of the working group um 
and and by being more inclusive probably your diversity numbers will will improve by having more people from with different points of view and so on you will be as well more effective uh developing software you will you will bring different point of view to to discuss certain things right to cover uh different topics and so on so that means that means healthy community as well um we can discuss about engineering community aspects perhaps so there are there are many of them probably we need like a another full day to discuss about what what health means in in open source communities but in in all in all our our position is that um well for first metrics are useful to to check if those policies that you're applying whatever you are 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 working basically you need to measure that in somehow um and second uh as open source communities are growing a lot so we are talking about the level of hundreds or thousands of developers the the way that community management was done like 10 years ago cannot be done anymore so if you think about open infra you think about the cncf ecosystem you think about <coughs> sorry other other communities you need data so you can scale yourself so data useful from that perspective so then to do your work either you're at the ospo or a community manager or at the level of foundation you need data basically and you need data to scale as well and for a com um, foundation um i believe they have contributors from over 180 countries of the world so um yes of course they need the data to to get the, a, a kind of overview, I don't know how they they are organizing their their work, and I'm I'm very impressed, and I I believe your your toolings and services are very very helpful. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> um, you mentioned the CNCF. Do you also working with the with them? Um, or are you no. are you? So in heading? the case of the. Yeah, so in the case of the CNCF, we are analyzing the CNCF community, uh, but for for some customers in in this case, uh, a specific use case we have, for instance, is with uh, with Red Hat, where we are indirectly analyzing CNCF because they have the project of OpenShift. OKD is the is the open source project. So <clears throat> sorry. So OKD is uh, OpenShift is basically a distribution of Kubernetes, and Kubernetes is a project of of CNCF. So, um, so yeah, that's that's one of the examples. In any case, CNCF they have their own their own metrics um, tool, which is not Biturgia in this case. They they developed that back in time. Uh, at the same time, we were, I think we were we were having some conversations, but um, didn't happen. And they have now what they call Dev Stats. So uh, that's what they had like a few years ago. I don't know. I don't know nowadays. This is community driven and and so on. So yeah. That's that's great. So I mean, the thing is about having metrics. So we need to to have metrics wherever you are. So if you are having your own tools, good. You mentioned the the community is uh, your tool also a community driven project or a, a project? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so uh, Grimoire Lab is the name of the of the open source project, and this is part of the Chaos community. Um, th there is another another uh, software product there, by the way, which is called Or. Uh, it's slightly different in terms of focus and so on, and mainly uh, in this case coming from from a university, so their needs are slightly different, let's say. But uh, said this, um, so yes, Grimoire Lab is uh, is an open source project. Um, in terms of community, uh, I would say this is this is a, a project uh, driven mainly by by Viterja in this case. Most of the developers and activities are coming from Viterja, but it's true. That we have a small community of people participating in terms of percentages more than 50 percent of the activity is done by viteria in this case um but well this is this is how is this in terms of users we have we have several users and indeed we have people that are building uh on top of our technology for instance or chaos technology so let's let's make a difference between the open source project and the and the commercial product so commercial product is viteria analytics and then Viteria Analytics uh, is basically the Mart Lab. Uh, we deploy that, we maintain, back fixing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There is support, there is training, and there are consultancy hours. So Viteria Analytics is about all of this. And then if we think about OSPO or Inner Source, then it's about we have like a let's say a framework of, of 
consultancy that we can serve with with customers and so on. We help them move forward with in that in that space. So coming back to to um, Grimoire Lab. So um, there are there are several several other projects that are building on top of of Grimoire Lab. For instance, Mystic is a open source project by uh, Rochester Institute of Technology that they are building on top of Grimoire Lab, and they are they are using that for their own research and activities. Um, there are others, for instance, uh, LibreOffice. As far as I remember, they are still using. They have their own instance of, of uh, Grimoire Lab. Linux Foundation Insights, for instance, that was a... Um, uh, they started all the development using Grimoire Lab as a starting point. By the way, even if this is a Linux Foundation project, uh, it's not open source. It's a proprietary solution, just for the records. That's interesting to say. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's it. Um, but yeah, Grimoire Lab is, is open source, of course. Um, and there are there are some others. So, in terms of users, we have uh, we have academics, we have industry as well. Of course, all of all of the Viterja customers, um, and we have um, Google Summer of Code the students. From time to time, they come, they do certain developments and activities. So that's that's great. From authority, I don't remember if we had specific interns. Um, I don't remember right now. So I think for sure we've, we've been working with Google Summer of Code. So in terms of community, it's it's true that it's mainly a Viterdia uh, driven project, we can say. But uh, at the same time, in Chaos, we are willing uh, other companies and corporations to come. So anyone listening here is would be great to see you there. And with all your experience and your insights of um open source communities what is open source to you that's a good question um so for me open source is is about people um and basically just people because if, if you think about technology technology evolves whatever is is trendy nowadays or 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 is the you know the the edge technology may not be in a few years but but people are the ones that are working together and putting together effort with a common mission and vision, right? Um, and because open source is giving clear rules about how you engage, how you develop software, how you do certain things, then the rest of it is basically people interactions. So it's about the community, it's about the people that work together, it's about uh, making sense of all of that you know that that chaos in somehow that 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 activity that uh, uh, those things and, and produce um, really high quality pieces of software. Um, uh, Open Infra is one of them. CNCF, the Linux kernel has been there for years. Uh, of course, there are there are different ways of managing open source communities. There are more um, in general. They are flat. Uh, th there is no such hierarchy, right? But there is what we call the benevolent, benevolent, benevolent di dictator that well, there exists out there and, and, and might be. But uh, the thing is that people keep engaging in, in those communities. It's true at the same time, but that open source, and, and this is perhaps a, a danger for open source communities because nowadays open source is becoming more a commodity. So it's something that if you are working in a corporation, you simply take the software and that's all, right? But you don't take care of contributing back or taking care of that community. Um, and more and more uh, companies are even using the uh, the open core uh, business model, um, or even they are changing the license. We can think of MongoDB or Elasticsearch, for instance. Suddenly they realize that open source is not a business model or they are not doing as much money as they expected, given that they may have, for instance, venture capital, um, and they, they decide to change the license. So all of these movements, uh, well, those are probably dangerous. And, and my feeling nowadays is that uh, given the, the size of the open source communities is that developers are working in the open, some of them, I mean, I'm, that, that's my feeling again, so I don't have data about this. Uh, but uh, my feeling is that people are working in the open because they are basically forced to work in that way because maybe they need to develop software, the CNCF, let's say, or Open Infra or any other places, doesn't matter. But the thing is that they are uh, 
they are set you have to work in this way and basically uh perhaps they don't care that much about this being open source or proprietary software um and if you think about open source since uh, its roots in somehow what it means from a uh from a from an individual perspective the freedoms um uh perhaps the more philosophical way of thinking about this perhaps open source communities are losing that uh but then at the same time they are becoming mainstream so well it, it's a balance probably so we are now moving into the mainstream discussion so perhaps not that many people are uh worried perhaps about what open source means in reality it's just another way of working or producing software so this is open source for me <laughs> i think it's both i think it's uh you you mentioned the the companies which are using the open source just just for them and not contributing back but there are also companies who are paying their their employees to contribute mm -hmm. so you have both and um you also have the the passionate developers <laughs> who are sitting the whole night always um so i think you have both and um i i totally agree open source is way more than technology open source is a is mindset is a way of of collaboration mm -hmm. and um of yeah developing things together mm. yeah it's about communities yeah and um, I'm very impressed um, of the communities because they achieve some politicians couldn't achieve during the whole history. Working together without bound as borders, boundaries, um, and the you you also mentioned the diversity and inclusive um, movement in in the open source communities. Mm -hmm. um, they're yeah, they have a build the community of openness and this is uh, for me unique in the world mm -hmm. yeah I, I i totally agree with you so it, this is a really good way of of well first meeting new people which is great always um and building something together so you have a purpose of of something or, or, or of doing something together chaos community where we are started with um with uh with the technology and everything is 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 a great example so we started like uh just a few of us um we are growing slowly but we are there so okay. thank you it was uh, really a pleasure to meet you yeah thank and you I, thank you for your time maybe we, we meet at some of the summits or events